It is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by Coach Paul Henson, who is the head football coach at Mid American Nazarene. The Pioneers finished the season nine and two. Coach, we talked a number of times about playing meaningful football in November. There is no doubt you all were playing meaningful football in November. Congratulations, by the way, on the season. Let's start right there. Tri champs in the Heart South. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, and uh, thank you uh, for having me. And it's always good to talk to you and. Really, we kind of talked to you at the beginning of the season, uh, you know, there at Langston, and and now we kind of here at the we're here at the end of the season, get to talk to you again. So I really appreciate the time and all you do for NAI football. Thank you, thank you, Coach. I, listen, it, it's it's a privilege to always get to, to visit with you too. But this year, it, it was a great year. I mean, you had a fantastic season in 2022, and you follow that one up just by uh, setting this, the, the bar just that much higher for the future, nine and two overall. Let's go back to that final game of the season. You take on a very tough Benedictine team with the heart South on the line back and forth. I mean, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time I was watching the video at some point, I was listening to the radio broadcast at others and just what a fantastic game overall. I'm sure for any fan watching it, but from your perspective to come back and get that victory, 38, 31 over Benedictine, tell us about that. Yeah, you know, I think uh, anytime you think about heart football, um, it definitely you have the heart in the heart north. You got Grandview, and the, the other teams are pretty good. And you know, you talk about the heart south. You got some really great teams, and we knew going going into the season. You know, the last couple of years, uh, Benedictine has been the last game for us, and you know, we want to have the opportunity to be playing for a conference championship. Uh, you know, going in that last week of the season. And our guys did that throughout the year and, and going into a tough place to play, really, um, and win a game. And uh, our guys just, they kind of had it set out that they, that's what they wanted to do at the beginning of the year. And and uh, to have that opportunity there at Benedictine and play a great team. Uh, and our guys were up for the challenge. And, you know, I, I finally felt like after uh, obviously getting the win, but after that game, you know, I finally feel like we finally have arrived here at Mid America, and just uh, and you could see the trend in the last. You know, this is my fourth season, but it's kind of how we continue to get better every year. And and really, we kind of we went over that hurt that hurdle uh, that last week of the season. And our guys believe that they can win. And you know, and and we played really well. Um, execute the game plan. The players just played really well. And and you know, hats off to Benedictine. They're a great team as well. You know, what I mean, so to be able to do that versus a great opponent, uh, it's just testament to our kids and the type of kids we have here and so it's, it's pretty awesome no doubt and and when you when you get a big win like that over an opponent that clearly is a quality opponent i know it makes it th that much sweeter uh, you went on the road to do it you bookended your season with some big time road wins i had the opportunity as you mentioned to get to see you all face to face this year on the road at langston to open the season that was a big win. It came down to the wire then, 24-21 overtime, blocked a field goal to secure the victory in that one. Coach, talk about that a little bit too. I mean, I know so many big games over the course of the season, that seemed like it was really a, a, a good springboard for your year. Yeah, you know, that's really why our conference went to that just 10-game schedule and so you could go play 11th game somewhere. And I feel like it was really important for us to go somewhere else, play someone else that we haven't played here, in really a long time and, and versus a good opponent, you know, Langston, they finished six and four, you know what I mean? So that wasn't just some easy game for us to go down there and play and, and really kind of get our name out there even more. And uh, as the year went on, you know, if you look at a lot of our scores, every game that we was, was within a possession, we won, you know what I mean? And so that kind of tells you the type of team we had that we, our kids are just tough and they figure out how to get it done. And uh, that's just, that's just the testament of the type of kids we have here. But also, you can kind of hopefully, kind of going forward, you, everyone kind of starts recognizing us and 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 how how you know, the type of football we play here at Mid America, and and it's just pretty awesome for the future. We're visiting now with Paul Hanson, the head football coach at Mid American Nazarene, head coach for the Pioneers, as you mentioned for for four seasons now. And we're right here on Midwest Sportsnet. Thank you for watching. Please continue to enjoy the videos here on the channel. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach, I, I don't think we could get through talking about 2023 football at Mid-American Nazarene without mentioning Adrian Parsons to Orlandis Mitchell. What a connection over the course of the year. Parsons, second in the NAI. Let me let me throw some numbers out really quickly. I don't have all of them memorized, so I will look at them. But I, the names are there because they kept showing up throughout the year with consistency. Parsons, 300.9 
average yards per game passing for the season, 33-10. That was at the top of the NAI, that total number, through 11 games. 28 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, great ratio there. Mitchell, 113.4 yards receiving as he had 1247, 1,247 receiving yards. That is at the top, the average third in the NAIA, and he had eight touchdowns. Had a rushing touchdown in that final game as well for you too. Got to add to his stats just a little bit. One of the things I thought was interesting though, and I, and I want to hear your perspective on it, but throughout the course of the season, they just kept setting records with longest touchdown in program history. Tied the record at 90 yards, and the next week it was a 92-yard touchdown connection from, from Parsons to Mitchell. And then you end the season with a 96-yard touchdown connection from Parsons to Mitchell. Really quickly, Coach, they're running out of field to keep setting these records. Uh, somebody should tell them that. Yeah. You know, uh, Orlando's half his touchdowns this year. I think uh, four of them were 90 yards or plus. And so, uh, you know, he, you know, I recruited, you know, Orlandis out of high school and he was a top six, uh, he finished like top six in the state of Missouri in the 200 meters. And so, uh, yeah, the field does run out, but I just tell him to lean left a little bit after he catches the football. So he's, uh, no, but he's, he's, he's a great, great runner, a great player. He's a kid too, that kind of came in the program that we saw the potential in, but, you know, he, he has some times where we had to have a lot of conversations and, you know, he figured it out this last year and really this was his first season starting for us. Um, and so, you know, he just did a really good job and, you know, the, the sky's the limit with him when you have that speed and you can do all the other things that he did. I think the thing a lot that goes on those too is he made a lot of contested catches this year, you know, and a lot of times track guys, they, they don't, they don't do that as well. It's just more like go routes, but he made a lot of contested catches for us this year. He has, what, 60-plus catches on the season. So um, he was catching the football in a lot of ways. Then, obviously, Adrian Parsons, you know, he's he's unbelievable. Um, you know, he's I think he's like 1,400 yards away from being the all-time leading passer in school history here. Um, and really, you know, his freshman year, um, he only started one game, the very last game of the season against Benedictine. You know, the week before that, he kind of came in because uh, our starting quarterback had gotten hurt. So, I mean, he's done a lot of this in, you know, two years starting. Um, and so it's pretty cool to see what he could do next year, his senior year. Um, but he's, he's pretty special for sure. I, I know we'll talk about him in a few months when we visit again, pre previewing the 24 season, but definitely a name to remember. And, and what a fantastic season for him, for Mitchell, for the offense as a whole, because it really did its job. The defense did its job as well, giving up only 25 points per game, 11 interceptions, 22 sacks, didn't have any defensive touchdowns. I don't know if that's a point of emphasis or not. But realistically, and and obviously a, a tough matchup against Grandview, a tough matchup against Baker in both of those, but held held their own when they needed to. And, and as you mentioned, you were right in there on those one-possession games, maybe a little bend but don't break, and they did not break. Yeah, you know, and, and Coach Cordova, our defensive coordinator, Coach Benton's our defensive back coach, you know, Coach Brummers, our defensive line coach, you know, Coach Anderson, uh, Coach Griffin, they, they do a great job. And, and really, um, this this defense, there's a lot of guys that, that made a lot of plays for us, but this was kind of – some of them was their first year ever starting. So, you know, John Brown was tied for our leading tackler. He was second-team all-conference linebacker. Two years ago, I was meeting with him here, and he was a nose tackle. He's a defensive lineman. And uh, he was kind of that, that, that tweener as far as the weight. And so he lost some weight. And, man, he was an unbelievable tackler for us this year. Um, you know, he'll be a junior next year. You know, Elias Carson came in, uh, you know, last about last January from Butler Community College. And, uh, you know, he ended up being freshman of the year for the whole conference. He, and he, was, uh, he tied John for leading our, our, our team in tackles. And he was freshman of the year. So you got those two guys. You know, Ethan Pritchard was another one that kind of came in with us when um, I got the job, uh, second team all conference. So, uh, you know, Jacob Tech on the back end, um, you know, and so we had several guys that, you know, have been here. Um, out of all the guys that got all conference this year, um, only one of them, uh, and Elias Carson was someone that, that transferred. All the other guys were high school guys that we brought in, we've developed, and, so, and not one of them were seniors. So that's pretty cool to kind of see. You know, the future is pretty darn bright here. You know, we return 11 starters on offense next year and then nine on defense. And so if we could just have really another good offseason, use this propels for next year, it's going to be pretty good. Coach, talk about propelling into next year a little bit. And, and I think it, it does have an interesting take then when you mention how many starters returning. 
what you can do with the recruiting. A season like this has to be strong for recruiting, whether it be through those strong junior college teams there in the state of Kansas that that see and, and know who you all are and what they can come be a part of. But also, and, and I realize it's not limited to just Kansas, but I know that there are a lot of strong programs there as well. The high school programs there in Kansas, Missouri, and throughout in, in getting to see that. Talk about what this means for your recruiting. Yeah, it's, it's really big. I mean, you know, getting to share this conference championship. We haven't had that around here since 2014. You know, that's the last time we've had it. And uh, this is our best record we've had since then. So being able to use this uh, to go into this next season, which is really big for us because we're opening – our new stadium uh, right here on campus. So, uh, you know, maybe we could get the summit out to, uh, uh, you know, Olathe, Kansas next October for our very first home game. Just put that out there. But, uh, you know, that between the the good season that we had, uh, really the last two seasons, we've, we've been pretty good. But uh, to do that and then open a new stadium, um, man, this, the sky's the limit here. We're, you know, we're being in a great location here in the Kansas City area. Um, there's just so many kids that need a place to play football. And the transfer portal is really kind of uh, hurting some of the high school kids a little bit. So we're, we're able to get some kids that maybe that uh, that we w- wouldn't be able to normally. And so that, that's also been a, a plus as well. I have to tell you, Coach, that Mrs. Midwest Sportsnet it, it grew up around the Kansas City area. She, she's from Warrensburg, Missouri. And any time that, that I go that direction – it's imperative I take her along. So when I tell her what you said just then, she'll start penciling that in for the first part of the fall next year. We definitely want to make a trip to Olathe. And it's a great campus, too. I've stopped by there before and driving through and, and love the facilities, but look forward to getting to see the new facility as you all open things up next season. Coach, one other thing, too, is as we wrap up our time together, I'm always grateful for that, and I want to make good use of it. You all were so close to the playoffs this year. It's an expanded playoffs to 20 teams. We've talked about it on the channel here a number of times. We'll continue to talk about it some. So close, just on the outside looking in, but you did what you you needed to. I mean, obviously, two more wins would make a difference, but from from the perspective of going out and and getting to be a part of the of the the conference championship, that that was pretty solid. Talk about your take on that, and and you know how how do you talk through the boys? Okay, Wilson, we we we've got a lot under our belt now. We can build on this. Yeah, you know, and um, I think for our guys who are here now, they knew what it was like when I first got here and, and trying to um, have this vision of being able to play for a conference championship or someday get one and to, and to see that happen. And I mean, we still did a watch party, you know, because we had a lot to celebrate for the season, whether we got in or not. Um, you know, I felt like that we, we deserved a shot at it. I mean, being nine and two, we had the second best record behind Grandview, which is number two in the country, you know what I mean, and the whole heart. And so I felt like that was um, – I feel like just the, the style of football that we have here in the heart, um, I think we deserve three teams to get in. Um, and really next year we're, we're getting two new teams in, so we're going to be the biggest conference in the country with 14 teams. And so I think that's something that, you know, going forward um, that will be really big for our conference. But our kids, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we got a lot of guys coming back and they're, they're going to use this. We're going to enjoy this, um, but also use this as fuel for the off season and uh, get ready for a, a really big season that we're going to have around here um, with the new stadium. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we're ranked, we're number 22, I think now. And so uh, we can use that kind of going into the next season, maybe get some better looks uh, in the rankings and all that. Coach, I agree with you. And I think that that may make a difference then what you've done this year. Sometimes it is, it's the long game. Uh, we had a coach on here talk about it and use that term, and, and I mentioned your team as well. It's it's the long game, and you may be looking at that, but the the, the journey, you're not at the start of the journey anyway. If it is the long game, you you, you may not have arrived yet, yeah. but you have gotten beyond that starting point. So uh, we look forward to following you, Coach. It's always a privilege to get to visit with you, and success, uh, and, and, and congratulations on the success this year, 9-2, Tri Champs in the Heart South, a fantastic season. The Mid America Nazarene Pioneers. Coach Paul Hansen, thank you so much for taking time with us here on the summit today. We always appreciate getting to visit with you. Awesome. Thank you very much for having me.